Now, I consider my taste in music to be pretty diverse. Like anyone else, there are some genres I prefer over others, but I'd be willing to give any song a chance. For a long time, I figured that, like, country and rap were, like, my least favorite things, because they didn't show up in my library very often. Maybe I only thought that, since everyone else seems to hate on country and rap music. But as time went on, more and more exceptions to that bias popped up in my library, and I had a newfound respect for country artists and rappers, old and new. But there's one genre in particular that, in very broad strokes, I just have no love for. Something that used to be a cultural staple and now is nothing more than a punchline. You know, like Radio Shack or Bill Cosby. Of course, what I'm talking about is ska music. In particular, the kind of punk rock ska that was prevalent in the 1990s. Names like Sublime, Real Big Fish, and Five Iron Frenzy. There was something about this rock and reggae fusion that was equal parts fun and grating. Like, if you were in the mood to dance and jive with a lot of friends, Ska would likely feel right at home. But if you were feeling sour or angry at the world, or like there was no hope for you, or like no matter how hard you work at being attractive and likable, there won't quite ever be someone who really gets you, or like you're working a dead-end job to pay bills that sustain your looming sense of inadequacy and don't add value to your day-to-day -day life, or like your existence irrevocably feels like it's going nowhere, and the only solace you get from that feeling is from creating internet content in an attempt to please people and validate yourself, and even that can backfire and feels like a chore, I... Uh, I don't know that ska music would help very much. But if you're me, and you spend most of your childhood in a nice Christian home with a dad ministering to the youth of the late 90s and early 2000s, alternative Christian ska music was an unavoidable fact of life. And the most personally influential ska album I ever listened to was this CD right here. This album is by B.O.B., who you may remember made that airplane song with Haley Williams, except for the fact that that's not true at all, and that B.O.B. actually stands for a bunch of believers in this case. And the album is called It's a Ska 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 World. In case you weren't already 100% sure what genre of music you were getting into, they do you the courtesy of reminding you four times that what you're about to listen to is a nice, relaxing, pampering ska treatment. The title is actually a reference to the 1963 film It's a Mad, 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 Mad World, and I didn't realize that until well into adulthood, so I can't really make fun of it too much anymore, though I will say ska is so much more fun to say several times in a row. Ska. Ska, 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 ska. On the cover for It's a ska, 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 World, one thing that's easy to notice is how everyone on the cover looks like South Park characters. Like, they're unapologetically made to look like South Park people. South Park was created in 1997, and this album dropped in 1999, so I guess it makes sense that B.O.B. would cash in on these new icons, but it's just weird to me that they would take on that style since B.O.B. is very much a Christian band and South Park continues to be one of the most risky and raunchy shows on TV. Did they not consider that maybe their intended Christian audience would see the cover of this, see that it kind of looks like South Park, and be like, uh-uh, I've seen that garbage on TV, no thank you. Or maybe it was, like, meant to be a bait-and-switch for actual South Park fans? You know what, I'm actually gonna go for that theory, since the case doesn't have a lot that has to do with Christianity, apart from the word pastor in one of the songs. Another thing that kills me about this cover is how the band members are rendered in nice, crisp vector style while the school bus behind them is just a low-fidelity photo. Like, there's no way this picture was any more than 400 pixels wide when they slapped it on there, and they couldn't even be bothered to use a different photo for the backside. I'm guessing based on my own experience that they opted not to hire a graphic designer and instead just get someone they knew who was good with computers to help out. The inside sheet is pretty well laid out, with all the song lyrics on one side and shoutouts from the band members on the flip side. Good on them for letting the band send out some personal thank yous, mostly to the record label. And Jesus. The whole band's accounted for. Billy Bob, Bobby, Robbie, Bob, Rob, Roberta, Robert, Roberto, um... Oh, I, I get it. See, it's B-O-B, because that, that spells Bob, and, uh, and all of the names, <laughs> they're Bob names. <laughs> I'm gonna go out on a limb and say those aren't their real names. And that'd be a pretty good joke, except that their actual names aren't listed anywhere inside the booklet. Like, I want to give them credit, I want to find out who some of these people are and what they're up to now, but all I have to go on are these joke names. And even if their names happen to actually be variations of the name Robert, no real info pops up when you search for any of them. You know, except for, except for Robbie Williams. You know, cause, cause he's famous. Cause he's totally the same Robbie Williams. Also, the booklet says it was produced by Bob B. Pin, recorded and engineered by Shishka, which took me a second, Additional vocals by Bob Ballou and Bob Parr, mixed by J.R. Bob McNeely, way to phone that one in. The South Park illustrations can be blamed on Mark Bob Neubauer. And lastly, my personal favorite, all songs written by Bob Sled. And maybe I just find that doubly funny because the only other album by this group is a Christmas album. Why would they basically omit everyone's names, though? Why would they want to stay anonymous behind these placeholder Robert nicknames and South Park avatars? Were they ashamed of what they created? 
Well, that can't be right. One of the songs is called I'm Not Ashamed. <laughs> what would have been so bad on It's a Ska, 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 Ska world to make someone want to hide? I'd ask you to buckle up, but there are no seatbelts on the school bus. Right off the bat, we get a track called Mission Trip to Mexico, and for anyone unfamiliar with the term, a mission trip is when a religious group goes somewhere in the world, usually another country, to spread their beliefs to the people who live there. So the very first word of the song is oh so fitting for this theme of spreading the gospel. Ska! It actually wasn't until I started writing this script that I found out about the animated music video that exists for this song. It seems to be the only music video for this album, and judging by the animation style, that makes perfect sense. It looks like a lot of tedious effort went into this, and holy shit, if the thing I said about them ripping off South Park wasn't valid before, it sure is now. It starts with this little intro where Billy Bob, Roberta, who is purple now for some reason, and Bob are asked about their mission statement. Tell me, Scooter, what is the purpose of Scooter? What the hell? I thought these were all Robert based names. Who's Scooter? You mean, uh, you mean like a, a, a point? Wait, you mean Bob was Scooter this whole time? Right, uh, got it. Well, the Alamo You can't trust anyone in this world. I say this about Texas. We were family, Bob! By mission statement, he means our Bob motto. Our motto? I, I thought that was a bunch of Spanish boats. <laughs> so after they successfully make their dark skinned friend look like an idiot, we get to hear their mission statement. Love the Lord with all your mind, all your heart, and all your soul. Love your neighbor as yourself. That, that breathing thing they're doing is really making me uncomfortable. Don't, don't take that out of context. That breathing thing they're doing is really making me uncomfortable. I didn't edit in that zooming, by the way. I guess they just really wanted you to feel the intensity there. We're about to jump into a stylized music video where Americans talk about people from Mexico, so I've got my stereotype bingo card all ready to go. Well, early this morning, I jumped out of bed. You know I don't want to be late. Wow. That's a cool effect. I got my Spanish to English dictionary because we're gonna go south of the border. Haha, <laughs> yeah! Screw giving children a means of getting to school, we gotta hop in Mission Trip Tour Bus now! God, it, I, I missed that. Come again? Yeah, no, sorry, uh, one, one more time? I thought so. Counting in Spanish. Let's mark that one off. Oh, I get it. He's spreading the word. Just like I'm spreading the word of my new show, look at this! Yo, who wants to see my new show? I guess. Me. What? The Cake Fight. Starring Vesta Cabido as Ringo and you as you? Where we get baptized in dog poop. It's going pretty well, I'd say. Oh, look at the little chihuahua puppy. So cute. Look at his little face. Oh, buddy, you don't have a collar, do you? <gasps> I know. I'm going to call you Romero. We'll have lots of fun together. We'll go on walks. We'll play games. We'll go to some of your favorite. <laughs> no! Romero! Not you too, Romero. This chihuahua just got wrecked by the fucking Liberty Bell. Just killed right in cold blood by one of the United States' most iconic monuments. Lead me back home. Also, it's a Taco Bell joke. I, uh, I, I know that now. I had, to, I had to look at the lyrics before I got that joke because I'm slow. Got some good news for you. You see, Aces came to save the earth from Zion. All right, first of all, I'm going to go ahead and mark off pronouncing Jesus as Jesus on my card. And secondly, I don't remember anything in the Bible about Jesus having lightning powers. Actually, come to think of it, maybe I shouldn't have marked off that spot. Maybe they were actually saying, hey, Zeus, because he's got the lightning stuff going on. And third, this depiction of sin really cracks me up. It's like this actually kind of terrifying little monster that Jesus just goes ham on with that lightning bolt. You know, if sin looked less like this and more like that, I'd totally be on board. And if I may say so Oh, please, please, let him say queso Eh, good enough Oh no, Robbie, what happened to you, man? Pool full of dye? Nuclear experiment gone wrong? Or are you just on the wrong band's tour bus? Also, the dog is driving the bus, Robbie Why are you letting the dog drive the bus, Robbie? This can only go poorly See, look, Billy Bob is throwing heavy, hardbacked, thousand-plus page reference books at children from the roof of the bus, Robbie you're an adult, you need to step up and be a leader here before- No! Rainbow! 
shot you too, great. To oh no, he's fine, I guess. Yeah, sure, that could have gone way worse. Automotive accidents are one of the leading causes of death here in the States, but I guess once you cross the border into Mexico, it's not an issue anymore. Glad to see no important American dogs died in this music video. I'll go ahead and update my entry I wrote on DoesTheDogDie.com and let them know everything's a okay. Siesta. Siesta. Fiesta. Fiesta. That guy's wearing a sombrero. So the music video goes on for a little bit with everyone partying, playing ska music, having a blast of a time in Mexico, and there's this shameless VeggieTales reference that happens. And with a final guy eating a pepper that's way too hot animation, I've got a winning bingo card that I can't redeem for shit, and we can call this mission trip complete. Been there, done that. Wow, I can't shake the feeling that these guys weren't terribly serious about being invested in the people that they've just ministered to. They show up, crash the bus into a stop sign, leave it that way, dance and party all over the nice plaza, nearly destroy a man's ability to hear by shouting to him about Jesus with a megaphone at point-blank range. And the two times we see them actually give out a Bible are the one delivered to that one kid's head from the top of a moving vehicle, and there's one that's handed off right before they leave as a sort of afterthought. And this stamp is really the icing on the cake. Been there, done that. It has this implication, like, yeah, we did what we wanted, no need to come back here ever, or check in on the friends that we made, or continue to invest in them, or anything like that. So that's the opening track, and it really sets the tone for the rest of the album. Just some all-around decent ska with mostly Protestant Christian themes going on. Track number two is called Homeschool Girl. Now, I was homeschooled for the first half of my primary education, so you could say that I relate to this song on a spiritual level. All day long in the crowded halls, bumping into the junkies. But it's mostly from the perspective of this decidedly non-homeschooled guy. Not only does he use the word junkies that kind of implies that all of his classmates are on drugs in that first few lines, but also that the school is giving him a faulty education, claiming that he came from the monkeys. Pfft, fucking dumbass teacher. Everyone knows there's no such thing as monkeys. Her classroom, it's in her house, and her teacher is her mother. In spite of the name Homeschool Girl, the song doesn't establish much about this girl other than she's schooled at home, is three grades ahead of the guy singing, destined for a full ride scholarship, and that she's good at making hot drinks. You know, like a good Christian woman should be. Man, I can't relate to this song at all. I was homeschooled and all I have to show for it is that I can make a frozen pizza. Though, to be fair, I do know how to make a frozen pizza without preheating the oven. They don't teach you that in public school. Track number three is called I'm Not Ashamed, and it's actually just a pretty good ska cover of the Newsboys song of the same name. It's a song about being proud of your convictions, as long as those convictions are about Jesus, that is. Not much to write home about. Not much to write about in the lyrics section either, apparently. All they put down for this one is a Newsboys classic. So if you wanted to know what they were even singing, you'd have to hope someone in the house has the Newsboys CD or hop on the internet, if your parents had decided in 1999 that it was worth the investment anyway. Jesus Track four is Goodwill Day, about a guy who wants to go to the mall, but he only has six dollars, so he goes to the thrift shop instead and finds some cool stuff. Now I can't drop 50 bills on Calvin Klein, but check out this cool shirt I got for a dollar. I'm now convinced that this is the album that inspired Macklemore's career. You know, between the one where he, he trash talks the church and, uh, and the one where he's uh, popping tags at the thrift shop. No doubt in my mind. The other thing worth mentioning is that during the bridge where someone whistles over the instrumentation, the lyric sheet just says, cool whistling part. A Christian music album aimed at young people wouldn't be complete without an abstinence song, and track five sure delivers. It's called I'm Gonna Wait. Betty and Johnny, they thought they were in love. We'll get to why I think that that first line is pretty hilarious, but before we do anything else, here are some mock-ups I made of what Betty and Johnny might look like if uh, there's anyone out there who is an artist and would like to make some, uh, some Rule 34 of these characters. Uh, that would actually make me very proud. That means they fucked. Now they just cry and wonder why they can't start over again. I must have missed what happened there. Did it not go well? Did they have a fight? 
Was there not consent? Help me out a little bit, Roberta. I'm trying to pick up on the lyrical subtlety, but I feel like there's a huge chunk of info that's missing from the story. I'm as confused as they are. Why can't they start over again? I don't wanna go through that pain. What pain? You can't tell a cautionary tale that leaves no inkling as to why things turned out so horribly. They did it. They did each other. Then what? People do that all the time and turn out okay. What happened to Betty and Johnny? Oh, and while I'm at it, remember that first line, Betty and Johnny thought they were in love? Yeah, it turns out that if you have sex with someone, you must not actually love them. You can't have both, so don't waste your time. So the second verse is back to Billy Bob on vocals, and he sings about an experience at church camp. Well, the boys and girls started pairing up and going out in the woods. This girl I know, she just looked at me and wondered if we should. Absolutely not. Under no circumstances should those two pair up and go into the woods. The smart, safe thing to do would be for them to split up, go into the woods individually, so if a tree falls or a bear attacks, fewer people die at once. Jokes aside, I don't have a problem with folks choosing to wait until they're married to have sex. It's their choice, and I don't think that that's a harmful one. This song is just laughably preachy and paints the opposite kind of relationship in a bizarre light that's honestly not out of the ordinary for Christian media to do. And really, the rest of the tracks kind of stray away from the heavy-handed caution that this one gives, and they focus more on the fun parts of their life and beliefs. Track 6, Doctor in the House, takes things in a different direction. This one just might be my favorite on the album, as it takes the perspective of two infirm that Jesus heal in the Bible, starting with a blind man. Hmm, what? No, I'm not gonna make a joke about the spitting in the dirt thing. Jesus does that, that's a real thing, that's in the Bible. Really, not a lot to remark on here. It's just a solid song about a blind guy and a dude with paralyzed legs who gets some help from Jesus' healing power in public. You know, the same guy who got mad at people for humble bragging and giving the church their money in a loud, obnoxious way for attention. Yeah, he does these big public healings for all to see and gawk at. He pointed to my stretcher. He said, throw that away. Is there a doctor in the house? The thing I really find funniest about these verses is that they all end with the sick guys being like, uh, what? Is there, like, a real doctor in the house? And doesn't see them through for their reaction to being healed. I'm not sure that that's productive for gospel awareness to cut these guys off before they can talk about being magically cured. Pastor Dancing is the unbelievably apt name for track 7 in which the pastor of the church I saw Pastor Dancing Move his feet in place Dances that's the song! I guess this was supposed to be funny and edgy at the time, since in the late 90s a handful of churches were starting to barely come around to the idea that dancing wasn't inherently an affront to God himself. Frankly, the song's about as weak as those dance party end sequences that animated kids movies always have. I don't know, maybe I'm the outlier here, maybe having people just dance is this genius punchline that everybody else gets but I'm the one guy who doesn't for some reason. While there might not be a lot of substance to the pastor dancing song, it does grace us with a big, hearty Boys, crank it up! Which, honestly, makes the whole thing worthwhile. Now I'll admit, I don't remember track 8 very well. It's called Break It On Down, and it's one of the ones that hasn't really been a part of my library over the years. It's not one that I've listened to very consistently. Huh. I wonder why I never gave it much attention. Okay, I, I remember now. I'm good. Thanks. Oh my god. This is the track that breaks me. Everything is wrong here. It's next to impossible to follow, and Billy Bob is trying to put on this rap voice that just makes understanding the lyrics even harder. The tempo is absolutely terrifying when mixed with a drum track that doesn't give you any kind of hint as to where the downbeat is supposed to be. This is an unholy union of rap and ska. I don't, I'm not sure that that's something you can make work, but this song, this song sure tries. And all it accomplishes is just violently ripping the appeal of either genre from your ears. Good ska has an easy rhythm and an enticing melody. Good rap has innovative rhymes and a beat that you can move to. But this song has none of those things. Breaking something down is supposed to mean like switching up the music in a cool way to add some variety to the track, but in this context, they're just using the phrase to say, we're gonna break the scripture down and dissect it so you can understand. That concept doesn't even transition well from the song verses. It starts with a guy talking about being in a low place in his life, which he doesn't give any details about, and being saved. That's all well and good, but what does your personal struggle have to do with breaking scripture down? And why in this most condescending way? By implying that your people are the experts and they're going to put it in little bite-sized words so 
that we can understand because we wouldn't otherwise. Like DJ's all say, it was supernatural. And this line just hurts. Here you make an unapologetic reference to DC Talk, one of the best Christian bands of all time. DC Talk knew how to make faith-centric music that didn't try to shove preachy ideas down your throat. The fact that you would even say their name during this atrocity of a song is an insult. DC Talk always made good music. Nevertheless, there's a common ground. You know the deaf hip-hop sound. Well, I, I mean, they, they figured it out, eventually. I think. This is just nonsense. It's agenda music. The spirit of being a musician is nowhere to be found here. It's condescending, it's preachy, it makes no attempt to connect, you can't keep track of the rhythm, you can barely hear the words, the lyrics are cringy, he rhymes y'all with all the- Luke, what are you doing? Nothing. Are you yelling at that CD again? No. The next song is called What I Believe, and I don't think I have to use my imagination too hard to guess what this one's about. Wow, I take it back. Totally not what I had in mind. This song is just Roberta singing about how she's not sure that any of the world's intellectuals had any clue as to what they were studying, but she read some of the Bible once, so she knows for a fact that all of it is true. Does the sun hide at night? Did people really used to live in black and white and white? So now, we finally come to track 10. The last track. And it shares its name with the album itself. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my distinct privilege to present to you Bunch of Believers, It's a Ska, 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 Ska World from the album, It's a Ska, 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 Ska World. It's a Ska, 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 Ska World. This is actually pretty good. It's just a feel-good song about enjoying ska music. Just a bunch of folks gathered together to jam out with their favorite style and have a good time. I can get behind this. They really saved the best for last. God works for me. Why don't you give it a twirl? He changed my heart. He can change the world. You know what? I can excuse that. The dude's just making a recommendation that he thinks will make the ska experience more enjoyable. He's not hurting anyone. Let's just enjoy the song. What the fuck? Oh, forgot to look at the booklet for this one. The Hanna-Barbera cartoon-themed bridge lets us know that this is a cool musical part and to clap your hands. Cool. I feel like there's so much to say about this album and yet I'd find myself weirdly speechless when I try to explain it and why I kind of like it. It's a mess. It runs the gamut from musically solid to flat out cringe inducing. The marketing and design is all over the place. The lyrics lack any kind of descriptive language and instead rely on just plain telling us how we're supposed to feel. Yet, in spite of its obvious flaws, some of the album's quirks are just endearing. You can tell that this bunch of believers had a lot of fun putting the music together and making it come to life, and you just can't argue with a good ska sound, I guess. It's like, every way you could feel about this album makes sense, whether you're like me as a child enjoying it genuinely, or me as a teen enjoying it for the nostalgia, or me now as an adult kind of enjoying it ironically. And it even makes sense if you don't enjoy it even a little bit. Everyone's taste in music is a little bit different. Some people like music that's really good, some people like music that isn't very good at all, and some people like popular music because it's popular. And I guess when it comes to my taste, this album shows that, I don't know, maybe just that I can appreciate a little bit of anything. Oh, oh that's cool. Anyway, about the YouTube poops. Oh, for the love of Where's my CD? I need that. It's a ska ska gray dog. Not you too, gray dog. Oh wait, oh no, look, he's fine. All right, I... I'll go ahead and update. I'll go ahead and update the entry I wrote. I'll go ahead and update the entry I wrote on it. <laughs> ah! Ah! But I relate to this song on a spiritual level. <laughs> Convinced that this is the album that inspired Macklemore's. <clears throat> yeah, it turns out of the. <laughs> Yeah, it turns out if you have sex with someone, you can't actually love them. You certainly... Yeah. Take these, uh, take these mock-ups. People humble bragging when you give the church mere, <laughs> mere, 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 mere. Yeah, he does these big public healings for all the people. Eh. DC talk, one of the most best...
Damn it. <laughs> one of the most best. <laughs> Whoops, forgot to look at the booklet for this one. Ah, uh, I forgot to look at the... Ah, uh, forgot to look at the booklet. Oh, forgot to... Oh, forgot to look at the booklet. Just like I'm spreading the word of Luke it is. Or Luke... Wow. <laughs> Luke it is. Yeah, good enough.